Greetings patrons. So this is going to be an explainer video for the Intrepid Gains research sheet, Google sheet. This is where 90% of the value from patron comes from um, and the token holders uh, comes from. Uh, this is where I put, uh, you know, the research experience that I have. Um, I put my details, my notes, etc. So I'm going to go over the, everything um, that I can in this sheet. Um, this video may or may not be long. I don't know, but we'll see um, how long it takes me to go over everything. But um, there is a lot of details here that a lot of people ask about. Um, so this will be the explainer video uh, for this uh, Google, this Google Sheet. Now, um, as you can see, I, I've been in, uh, doing this for a while. This is um, I started a model, and the model ranks the projects based on um, the project ranks the the projects on a statistical statement. Um, you know, you could read the titles here. Um, this is the way I review the project right here on the left. Like if I do a big analysis and I take a lot of time, it may take me a whole day to do it. Basically running a project through my, my intense model, my intense model run through, it gets a one. If if it's revisiting a project again, it'll be a type two. And if it's a if it's a quick review, it'll be a type three. Now you can see later on, I've actually do, mostly doing quick reviews just because I have more experience and I don't have to spend that huge amount of time doing the review anymore because I really get the concept a lot faster these days just from my experience in the space. But if I do um, an intense review, it'll get a video and you'll have this link, which will take you to the video of the project where I run it through the intense model. But I haven't been doing many of those, as you can tell, later, lately in down the, the track. This is the project name, the token. This is a special ID number that is used in the back end of this stuff. It's where I have an, something called an API application programmer interface, which pulls data into the spreadsheet from external sources, specifically coin market cap. And this is their ID system and it's used for that. So that's all that it really is. The, these are the statements from the model. Now I started doing a short term and a long term. This, the, the short term is actually added today. So, you know, um, and that's where I start because I, you know, in the meantime, like for the first year, this is basically the first year's call and it's gonna, it's not going to be that reliable. And this one's not going to be that reliable for the first year either um, because the first year is very uh, difficult to make. The statement that the model is making, a yes or no statement, is that a project will be in the upper performers, basically um, in the upper 30% of performers. Uh, against the average crypto and that it'll do that in a window of two to five years which means it'll be better it'll be better than holding like an index um, if it's a yes um, because it'll be one of the upper performers uh, out of the cryptocurrency space that's the expectation so the yes is basically saying compared to other cryptos this is going to be one of the better performers that's the statement i try to make and i do have a statistical analysis on both of these statements the short term and the long term and i recently added the short term and i also have one on the long term the long term is where a lot of this focus is going to be the short term is for the year um, it's basically saying i think it'll beat the average within the year and that's just a guess a guess on um on things like um hype um, you know, how the narrative spreads, et cetera, that kind of excitement that people have, et cetera. And the, the long term is whether it's a long term business model. So basically, if something has like yes in the short term and a no in the long term, it's for traders. It's like a meme. It could be something like that. But if it has a yes in the long term, uh, if it has a yes in both of them, then that means it's a good time to buy roughly. Um, I think it might all get hype and it has a solid business model. Um, if something has a yes in the long term and a no in the short term, that means I don't think it's going to capture narrative. It's not super hypey, but in the long term, it's a legit business model that will likely outperform because it has a good the elements to be a good business model. Those are the, that's just the way to take um, to overlook that. Now here's the, st the statistical output, and this is important to know. This is one of the most valuable things. I don't know of many um, channels that offer this, this is literally the value that I provide in that this is uh, the statistical analysis of my performance. And um, this, what this is, is that this is based on the long-term um, uh, reliability of the statements that I make. Sensitivity means like the probability of me saying that something's gonna be a performer when it is. Um, probability is the probability of any project being a performer against the average of any project just randomly picked. Um, and then this is after the statement. 
I make. So this is a good thing. This is, I, the, meaning, if I say something is going to be a stronger performer, the odds of it being a stronger performer has increased. The, the, the probability of the project of, do, of doing well has increased. Um, that's what post-model probability means. So it means if I say yes on something, it has a, it has a higher probability of being a successful project or, or st sticking to that statement. And uh, this is what you can see is there's like a, you know, like um, a difference here and it's positive, which is what we want to see. And, and I want to get this blue one as high as possible. And that's the value. The, most, the, the higher this is, the better the value. And um, this is basically shows my confidence and how it compares to just um, just based on general statistics. Now, finally, the short-term analysis actually looks to be most reliable, but it just started, so keep that in mind. And there's you know some heavy weights, such as uh, the NFT has a big weight in it that we've done recently. So this may or may not get worse. I expect it to get worse because 85% is quite high. Um, but this, this shows that um, a project has an a, up to an 85% higher probability of being a performer within a year um, if I have a yes statement on it for the short, short term. So, you know, this is just a short term box. I don't think it's going to be that reliable in the long run. Surprisingly, it says that I, I'm um, super reliable on this. But this super short term, there's a lot of weight in projects that have performed well that I've put a yes on in the short term. Um, so that's why that is just doing well right now. And it's also just launched. There's not a lot of data points. So keep that in mind as well. So this one, I think, will get a little worse. But this will be a good reflection for those short-term people to see, and for myself included, to see how well I understand hype. And that's what this represents. Now, this is a um, project. You know, you can get this at, below the information here. Um, you can get this, Projects by Token Performance. This shows the projects uh, based on just on the token entry price. Now, one of the things you'll notice is in the long term, a lot of the projects steal from their communities um, in the sense that the token holders get hit hard and they don't get to benefit from the token growing. Because look, the projects are, as far as mar by market capture, are average. It, those older projects, but they ended up stealing from their communities by having poor performance. So one of the things that you'll see, you'll see a lot of this in, in crypto spaces where the projects will basically steal the wealth of their investors, their crypto investors, by having huge amounts of unlocks, etc. And even though the project may or may not do well against the average, I mean, look, some of these even outperformed, but you, you ended up getting screwed. Um, by them in the long run. So you want projects that really do represent the shareholders like Luxo. Luxo was a great one. It actually had a fair, decent launch. And yes, Luxo um, like did much better for its founders, obviously, because they have a zero entry price, but also, you know, like the market capture of Luxo was much higher, like above um, above 50x, whereas the shareholders only got like a 15x. Still, at least it's a 15x compared to the other ones, you know, so you got to think about things like that as well. Um, yeah, so those are things to understand, but this definitely shows you one of the the highway robberies that crypto does to people in that they, you know, they have huge inflations, like the 1% of their tokens unlocked or 10% of their tokens unlocked, like Aptos Ape or whatever it's called, um, Aptos, you know, or uh, just these big VC dumps like Solana, et cetera. They all do this, and it's something that's disgusting. Hopefully, we can get to a place where projects really do try to enrich their communities and stop this nonsense of having hyperinflation. But that's what, how you understand this. So this projects by market capture basically shows how the project's own market cap moves against the average, which means how well it, it captures the market. You can see not many outperform the market here. It, they, they all kind of move together, which is what you would expect from statistically speaking. If something's performing like this, it means it's growing rapidly against the market. It's capturing market share. It's going to be a, it might be something like a high performer. Um, and, you know, this is just investing in the token and how, in, 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 how well that performs. This right here um, is basically just showing money flow into the alts. Um, and so you can see we've been flatlined for a while. Um, and when you, if you start seeing this move up again, we may be entering another cash flow situation where a lot of cash is coming into the space. But right now it's kind of flatlined. You know, the governments have been attacking, cracking down on crypto. So we'll see if this keeps flat for a while. Um, you know, it's just one of those things. This is all the statistics on for this. So these, that's what all this stuff down here is, is basically the, based on what I just said about that. All right. Um, and now let me just keep going through the, the stuff at the top. So you got your date, you got your price at review. Um, this is just the market cap data. This is the total market cap for the alts. Um, 
And then this is the latest price from the API data. This is the latest feeds, the latest market caps. And then we do it does a comparison between them, sees how they perform in the long term. This is the number of days in observation. The days that are in green, we could see that the goal is to be within that two to five year window. So when they're in green, they're actually in the window. So this is when it's most reliable. The market, the, this is what the model aims to predict is the projects that are in the screen here. And then I think it'll kick it out once it's after five years. We're all free the accounts at, at the five year mark. Because the goal is to read two to five years. And then obviously short term is, is impossible. So I, I have that censored out. Um, you know, so, I, so the goal here is to have that two to five year window is, is the goal of the predictions for these projects because this is the fundamentals channel. All right, and then expected ROI is a complete guess. Confidence helps give feed into how confident I feel so I can have a statistical analysis of that. And then this is all just helping with the data there. Um, let me see if there's anything else on this first sheet here. Okay, so I think that's everything on this first sheet. So that should help you guys understand this first sheet. Now this is just the, the data page right here, this coin uh, market cap data. This is where the data comes in. Um, MCA data, this is also, this is, now this right here is for narrative analysis and, and I have some, I, I keep up with that on some occasions, I'll come over and do it. Um, I have a helpful links thing. Um, you guys could always suggest anything you see there. <coughs> but everyone has their own link style, etc. And now with the help of AI, um, that's these are becoming less um, as necessary. Um, this is, you know, so here's, um, let's see here. I'll show you an example. So all of these right here are going to be market narrative calls. I'm going to look for the, okay, so this is the source, source authentication narrative. And you can see it has an analysis on that page. Um, and so it really takes me manually to come in here and do this, but it could help you understand how a narrative is moving. Um, and you could see how the narrative uh, analysis is going again with the market. But right now, you know, like uh, we're in a bear market, so it's not so much the narratives that I'm focusing on. Um, you know, the, the narrative analysis might play well in a bull market and I might be doing more of that in a bull market. But right now I'm just trying to run through projects and just get us well positioned um, into projects that are for the long, long run. Um, just trying to find some of those wins because now I, I think that that is the winning time. Now, regarding these colors, some people are asking me what that is. Well, when the market's moving down, I put green just because that's a better entry time. When the market's moving red, I just put red. It's not the biggest deal. Um, I wouldn't read too much into that. Um, so I think that's everything for the, for the most part with this. Um, yeah, so I think that will help you guys understand it for the most part. And then um, if you have any questions, just write below in the patron group or in uh, any other location. So it didn't turn out to be too long of a video. All right, later, guys.